and we are back with the third segment of the GSMC Basketball Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. And in this third segment, we are going to be focusing on Paul George again because, you know, he is one of the more popular players and one of the better players out of this in this free agency and in the free agency market. So we're going to talk a little bit about him and how, excuse me, it seems like the Golden State Warriors are ready to make um, deals with him as well as trade for him. So looking at this report, um, it's the, the headline for this is that um, Warriors are willing to give Clippers star four-year max contract. And there's another header that I saw in another article that is um, claiming that the Warriors are also ready to trade him, like um, trade uh, to trade for him. Like they're prepared to trade for Paul George and offer him a full four-year max contract. So a sign and trade. Um, or like trade and sign, however you want to call it. But also, I completely forgot to mention before in like, you know, the first segment that the Nets, they aren't done trading any of their pieces. So names like Cam Johnson, Dorian Finney-Smith, uh, Bojan, Dennis Schroeder, Ben Simmons, and Deron Sharp, they're all names that have been circulating on the Brooklyn Nets trade block. So eh, thank the Lord, please get Ben Simmons off the team, please. If that if that happens in this off season, I'm going to be the happiest person on the planet. I'm going to I'm a I'm going to throw a party. Like that's what's that's what's going to happen. But you know, anyways, let's go back to the um to Paul George because he is the most one of the most famous for one of the more famous free agents that are. Um, it seems like he's going to be a free agent. Again, we have no idea whether or not he's going to pick up his player option with the Clippers. And if he does, there is a possibility that, you know, the Warriors will trade for him if he picks up that player option. And then they'll sign him, you know, after that, after he gets that player option. But we'll see how they um, decide to work it in this free agency. Have no idea, like, what's going to happen. And chances are he might just stay with the Clippers. Who knows? But he is looking for that max. Now... They, um, the Golden State Warriors, according to this article by Bleacher Report, reportedly willing to offer Paul George a four-year max contract and free agency. Now, here's a quote from Brian Windhorst. To this point, the Clippers have only been willing to offer Paul George, um, about what they gave Kawhi Leonard. Three years at a little bit less than the max contract, and Paul George frankly wants four years. He wants a full out max, and there are a number of teams out there, I am told, that are prepared to give it to him, who are prepared to trade for him. One of those teams potentially is up the coast in Golden State. So this is um this is a quote from Windhorse. Now, honestly, it seems a little bit um I think it's a little bit um uh how should I say this? A little bit weird. Um, Paul George being on the Warriors, that sounds weird, like, um, and speaking as, um, again, this is coming from, you know, a fan that thought that, uh, Paul George going to the Thunder was also a little bit weird, but, you know, aside from that, um, seeing Paul George teaming up with Steph Curry is going to be interesting, if that does happen, if that does happen, um, it also seems like the Golden State Warriors don't really like getting younger players. Like, I mean, most of their roster is relatively old. I mean, Draymond Green, Klay Thompson, Steph Curry, and, like, most of those, like, their best players are old players. And it'll be very interesting to see how these players, they mesh with the rest of them and how Paul George is going to mesh with the rest of them in the <clears throat> in the locker room, especially with Klay Thompson, if, if Klay Thompson decides to leave, which is... Most likely what's going to happen if the Warriors offer Paul George the, the max contract. So we'll see exactly like how this free agency pans out. But having Paul George on the Warriors and Steph Curry, it really seems like they're going to they want to win and they want to win right now and they want to try and do it again with Steph Curry and you know they'll be loaded with talent again with uh, Paul George, Draymond and Steph Curry. And it's like it, it's like the Warriors they 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 don't seem to want to go away like they every single time that we think that they're going to just be um kaput for a little bit they don't want to go away they always that that front office 
is legendary. The Golden State Warriors front office is legendary. I'm going to stand by that till um, the end of time. They are one of the best front offices um, in this um, in this time and in this period in the NBA, without a doubt. And looking at um, looking at the article and you know the rest of uh, what it's got what's got to be said, George is limited to a four year max contract, both with the Clippers and any other team, due to the NBA's age thirty eight rule. The Warriors would have to reach a sign and trade agreement with the Clippers in order to realistically land Paul George, at least, you know, according to this article. So again, we'll see, we'll see how this works in the, um, in the free agency, but let me know in uh, the comments what you guys think of um, this, of this duo. Like, do you guys think that Paul George and um, Steph Curry, do you guys think that duo is going to be great? Do you think it'll be better than um, Clay Thompson? Would you rather have Clay Thompson, like, you know, stay on the team um, and be loyal to him as opposed to Paul George? Or would you rather just, you know, say, let's forget about all that and let's try and win right now and acquire a great free agent? Now, really, the biggest concern, I've seen a lot of people, I've seen a lot of people in the comments when I did the previous Paul George video, they all were concerned about Paul George's age and just how that um that would affect him and his play and yeah i understand that his age definitely plays a part of it but when you're trade when you're trying to get someone like him you're in a win now mentality you're not trying to um make a good team a better team for the future you're trying to win right now so it genuinely doesn't matter the age as long as you win right now and i understand injuries are also a major major concern but one thing that I just genuinely didn't understand is how, like, yes, you, like, injuries are a big concern, but most of the people, like, that were in the comments, I believe they, um, uh, you know, they were Philly fans. I'm just assuming because, you know, the conversation was about Philly and how they didn't want to negotiate in deals with Paul George. Joel Embiid gets injured every single postseason. Like, it happens all the time. And... But they're okay with that. Like, um, you're cool with um your best player getting injured. So what's the point? What? Why is it such a big deal that you're acquiring a free agent that could make your team better? Like, we understand that injuries are a possibility, but why? Like, I feel like it's a little bit odd because, like, I mean, yes, you're going to bring up the injuries now with Paul George, but you're not going to bring up the injuries with your star player Joel Embiid, like. I find that a little bit weird. That's just that's just me, however. That's literally just me. So I think that with Paul George, if he does, if he were to go to uh, the Golden State Warriors, I'm not entirely sure how that would fit. I really do think that the Sixers are a much better fit for Paul George and, you know, the situation that he wants to be in. And um, while and not only that i mean steph curry he also has a history of ankle injuries and they do happen at arguably some of the worst times so that also might backfire and you know especially with his age because you know they're both relatively old it's um it's a bit of a risk like it is a bit of a risk but it does seem like it's a risk that the warriors are willing to take but i think that i, I genuinely just i think that the Sixers are a better move for him. I genuinely think that. But there is also the crazy scenario that he just decides to stay with the Clippers. But since he's really reluctant on um, getting that max, it doesn't really seem like that's going to be the case. So it really seems like he's going to go to a completely different team. So just needed, just wanted to bring that up in the news. Um, that is arguably the, um, that is going to be the talk of the offseason where Paul George decides to end up and um up oh, we have somebody in the chat <laughs> stupid laker fan that's a funny name um this is not a risk for golden state but east will um uh will be smart right like that's that's genuinely like what i think as well because like you know the western conference is incredibly loaded with um talented teams i mean the the one seed and the um and the 10th seed were like two games apart at one point Meanwhile, when you're over on the Eastern Conference, you have a little bit more of like an e you can even the playing field out a little bit because there's only, in my opinion, 
in the Eastern Conference. There's only really three teams right now that are able to compete. And those three teams are the Boston Celtics, obviously, uh, the Milwaukee Bucks, and the New York Knicks. Like, those are the only three teams that I genuinely think are competing in the Eastern Conference. Every other team doesn't matter now pacers yes i understand they made it to the eastern conference finals but if the knicks were healthy the knicks would have made it there i'm reluctant i will refuse to to listen to anyone who thinks that the pacers would have beaten the knicks if the knicks were healthy refuse to hear it refuse to believe it nope 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 and not only that but like i mean the bucks i i gotta respect the bucks Giannis de kumpo just uh, hall of fame talent hall of famer greek freak um and Damian Lillard like while he wasn't the best it was also I did do a podcast saying that he wasn't at 100% because he wasn't training in the off season because he didn't want to get injured because he knew he was going to get traded so I have those I have those three teams as competing teams and I don't see anybody else in the Eastern Conference being able to compete against those three teams like sure Philly, that could be an option. Yes, I understand there's going to be a bunch of people in the comments that are like, oh, but Philly can compete with the Knicks. Oh, Philly can compete with Boston. No, they can't. Joel Embiid gets injured every single postseason. Joel Embiid has yet to beat the Boston Celtics in a postseason, and the Knicks just stomped the Joel Embiid out of the um, postseason this recent year. So get out of here with that. Um, and let me see, what else, what else, what else? Oop, another, um, stupid Laker fan in the comments yet again. Yeah, they need at least five teams competing in the East to pull out, uh, your checkbooks. Um, so, yeah, that's basically, um, that's basically what I, uh, I don't, I don't know exactly what you mean by that. If you want to, like, go ahead and explain that, I could, like, you know, have a talk with you, like, a conversation with you in the next segment, because I do have to move on to the next segment, which is going to be talking about some potential draft day trades that are going to be, um, that are going to be happening, or, you know, not going to be happening, but could possibly happen um, as, you know, the NBA draft is approaching. So I might as well go ahead and talk a little bit about the draft and the possibilities of players being traded on draft night so i'll talk a little bit about that right after this short break be sure to stay tuned for the best and latest podcasts available anywhere go to the podcast app on your cell phone and type in gsmc to access free content rich podcasts on health and wellness book reviews sports, entertainment, relationships, social media, movies, technology, finance, and even weird news. Subscribe and download the GSMC Podcast Network's family of shows, available everywhere podcasts are found. <laughs> 